Hello everyone and welcome. You guys know that I do all my own automotive maintenance and repairs. As cars get more and more complicated, you need better and better scanners to be able to properly diagnose automotive problems. Over the past few months, I've done testing of different scanners trying to find good ones that I and my viewers can benefit from using. I test these scanners so I can tell you all about them and answer your questions so you know which scanner is best for your situation. Some viewers may want a simple scanner and others may want something a bit more complicated. So today I'm reviewing the most advanced scanner so far. This one has everything that all the other scanners had that I tested and plenty more. I'll go through and explain all the features and do some demonstrations with this scanner and I leave it up to you guys to decide which one is the right scanner for you. But I think this scanner is about as professional an automotive scanner as you can find without spending a fortune. So let's check out and see what I got this time. But before we do that, if you enjoy watching honest tool and product reviews plus helpful DIY projects, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you get notified every time I produce a new product review video or DIY video. Alright, so let's see what I have here today. So today we're looking at the Foxwell NT809 Diagnostic Scanner. There's a shot of the box for you. And let's pull this puppy out of here. Alright guys, so when you unbox this puppy, this is everything you get. Now this is the Foxwell 809 All System Scanner, available on Amazon, link in description below. At the time of making this video, this unit retails for $495.99. And they probably have some discounts on their Amazon page, so I suggest you check that out and see if you can save yourself even more money. Now what you get in the package when you unbox it is you get the owner's manual, which has all the details about how to set this up, communicate with your vehicle, all that kind of good stuff. I suggest you read through it. You get the OBD2 cable to hook it up and connect to your vehicle, and you get a USB-C cable to charge up the unit, and you get a convenient hard case to keep it all in, keep it all nice, safe, and secure so it doesn't get damaged when you're not using it. And this unit does have wireless communication in case you're wondering. It brings the OBD2 cable so you can hook it up directly to your vehicle. But if you want to have wireless capability, you can purchase a dongle that basically communicates to this device and helps it communicate to your vehicle wirelessly. You can buy that separately. I chose not to do that, but if that's important to you, I suggest you buy that. Anyway, the unit itself is 10 inches in width, 6 inches in height, and 1.5 inches in thickness. The unit only weighs 1.9 pounds. Now this unit runs on the Android 9 system and it has a 4 core processor and 32 gigs of memory. It has a 7 inch capacitive touchscreen which is good for people with bare hands or if you're wearing gloves also it is meant to work with that quite well. It has a one button Wi-Fi update for all systems or you can update each system individually if you choose to by selecting that system in the menu. It has a built-in battery so it can run on its own separated from the vehicle as you can see right now I have it turned on for you guys and that internal battery has a runtime of five hours continuous running from a full charge. Now this device has the capability of diagnosing over 10,000 vehicle models including Asian, European and American vehicles. It also has a 4-in-1 graphing ability where on the screen you can set up up to four different functions that you want to graph for the vehicle and see them all in real time at the same time. So you can see how one thing changes and it affects the performance of another one that can help you very much in diagnosing a vehicle. It can also generate a diagnostic report that you can share through email or you can print it out through your computer printer. It also gives you a health and monitor report and it can diagnose your battery performance as well. Now this unit comes with 28 built-in reset functions including such things as oil reset, EPB, SAS, TPMS, throttle relearn, brake reset, transfer case gearing, transmission, steering, ECU replacement, airbag replacement, seat replacement, EGR, headlamps, EVAP, turbo, windows and door lock relearn, injector coating, language change, rain sensor, immobilizer, 
DPF regen, and many, many more systems. I'll show you all that in just a moment. Now, this unit is an all systems communicator. It can scan and communicate to all the different systems of your vehicle, based obviously on what your vehicle has, since all vehicles are gonna be different, but it can talk to the engine, the transmission, the body modules, electrical modules, ABS, SRS, chassis modules, suspension modules, and many, many more. So it is able and willing to communicate to all the different parts of your vehicle, so it's very, very handy to use this device. So let's go hook it up to some vehicles and see what this baby can do. All right, guys, so here we are hooked up to my Ford Mustang, and this will basically prove and demonstrate that this unit works just fine with American vehicles. So basically what you do is when you first start up this unit, this is the start screen that you're going to see. And then you can select on here many different things to do. The big button, the most common one you're going to use is a diagnostic button right here. Maintenance is all the maintenance features that this one has. The 28 functions are right in there. I'll show you that right now. And you can see right there all the different functions that come built into the unit. You don't need to purchase anything. They're already built in. And then you select the one you want, like odometer right here. And then it goes through where you have to select whatever vehicle you have and so forth and go from there. And you only need to do that because I haven't set up the vehicle yet. Once you're in the vehicle, you won't need to do this. You just go straight to the vehicle. You go straight to whatever you need to do. And we'll do that in a moment, but I'm showing you this one right now. So these are the 28 functions that it has built in for maintenance resets. So let's back out of here. Anyway, you can go into settings here, and you can set up all the different things like, you know, brightness and wallpaper and the uh, units you want to use and so forth. It works, you know, for metric or standard, all that kind of good stuff. And you back out of here. And you, in my account, you basically, you have to set up an account with Foxwell for any updates you want to have. And, you know, basically, so you can update the machine in the future, all that kind of good stuff. Data manager right here, that's where you store all your vehicle information. So, uh, basically, I would create a file for my Mustang, and I would keep everything under there. And every other vehicle that I do, I create a separate file, and it stores all my reports and so forth right in the unit right here in the storage memory. And if you go into the updates right here, that's the button right there that shows you where you can update everything. And you can either do it manually where you update one at a time, or you can hit just update all, and it'll update everything for you. Let's go into there, and it loads up all the different modules that it has inside. And there you go. Basically, the menu pops up, and it shows you all the different things. And all the resets and the vehicles and everything are all in here. So you can go through and select the one you want to update, and you press the button over there to update it. I already went through and updated everything, so that's why you see that shows latest right there for everything. And it tells you the version, you know, number of it and stuff like that. It'll tell you the latest update, what it included, when it was done, all that kind of good stuff. So once I got this all powered up and everything, because I took a little bit of time uh, between shooting the video and so forth, I charged it all up, and I got it all updated and so forth, so everything is up to the latest, and it's all current. So basically right there, there's only one that I haven't done, and you can see the button up there where it says update because I haven't done that one yet, and that's the only one that remains to be done. That one up there is the only one that remains to be done. Everything else has been updated, but I left that there so you can see what it looks like. So let's back out of here, and then uh, basically what we'll do is we'll go into the diagnostic right now, and I have the vehicle hooked up. Let me start it up, and we'll go from there. So what you do is you press the diagnostic button, and you can either select the vehicle, and that's another thing, I that's the one that I left unupdated, and you can see if something needs an update, it'll put an orange arrow right there telling you that you need to update it to get the latest information on it. So the BMW I have not updated, that's why it has an orange arrow, which you saw a moment ago, it was still not updated. Anyway, so what you can do here to get into the vehicle is you can select your vehicle from the menu, and there's a lot to choose from. You can see a lot of vehicles there to choose from. And you can select it and do it yourself manually if you want to, or you can just press the VIN button up here, and it'll do it for you. And one of the things I wanted to point out, let me see if I can find this, is that this vehicle is that this scanner can communicate with Tesla. You can see right there, Tesla. This scanner does work with Tesla models. So it works with pretty much every vehicle out there. So let's just, uh, we're back to the front, and I'm going to press the VIN button right here, and it'll basically select the vehicle automatically. Then you can select manual or automatic, and I'll just do automatic. And then what we can do on this is do something like a real, a quick scan. You can do a lot of things, vehicle profile, control modules. Let me show you the control modules. 
and there you see all the different modules that are in this vehicle and you can go into each one and select whatever you want to do if you have a problem or anything like that if you have a problem it would show up over here but there's no problem so nothing shows up and we go back and you can do a quick scan and it goes through and scans everything and it tells you if there's any problems and like you saw a moment ago there's no problems everything is passed no fault so there's no problems with this vehicle at all back up out of there oh cancel that let's pick something to do uh, some analysis with let's pick something that we can check here and you can see you can go into your instrument cluster right there you can do a lot of bi-directional controls with this unit and the satellite digital audio all that kind of good stuff we're not going to do any of that let's do a PCM powertrain and you can do EC information read codes clear codes live data let's do some live data and let's pick a few things that we can look at and uh, that way we can go through and uh, show you how this works let's pick a uh, accelerator pedal right there pedal D, pedal E, F, pick these different things and see what it shows us as far as that goes accelerator pedal position, let's take a look at those and there you have a text representation showing you what everything is some of them don't have anything, it's either okay or not okay that one right there, no fault, so there's nothing to show there the other ones show you a percentage and park pedal that's uh, no no information right there and if I give it gas you can see how all the numbers change giving you up-to-date live data of what is taking place now if we put it for a graph you can pick up here which one you want to see and that shows you right there how quickly this represents the information given to it by the vehicle this is live data of me accelerating the vehicle then you can merge everything if you want to right there and it'll show you everything in one big graph and it shows you how everything changes depending on what you're doing So that gives you some good representation right there of how to well use the data. And let's see, let's go back. And let's uh, get rid of some of these. You can undo them anytime you want. And then you can pick something different to look at anytime you want. And right there, you can see the air conditioning clutch. Let's take a look at that. The air conditioning clutch is off right now. If I turn it on, that tells you right there it went on. So this gives you a lot of detailed information that you normally wouldn't know unless you had a good scanner like this. And I turn it off, and it goes off again. So that's very good as far as diagnosing things. got airflow trim, axle ratio, all sorts of information there. Let's go with the brake on off and brake pressure applied switch. Let's look at those. And right there you can see like I'll hit the brake right now and they're both on, they're both off. They're both on, they're both off. And you can graph that also and that shows you right there every time I hit the brake it goes on and off.
So if you were doing different diagnosing of the brake problem or something like that, you could see if it's actually a switch on the vehicle or if it's actually a mechanical problem. Battery positive voltage. Let's take all uh, these off of here. And the battery voltage right now is 14.06. We can graph that also. And you can see the voltage changing, indicating that the system is charging properly. If it was a flat line, you would definitely have a problem. But that tells you right there what the alternator is putting into the battery. So it gives you real-time data of what is going on there. So that's a lot of useful information this uh, scanner has that you can utilize for diagnosing. Let's look at the fuel uh, let's fuel rail pressure. Let's look at that. You can see the fuel pressure right there. And you can graph these. You can have a multi-graph. We don't need the engine coolant. Let's see fuel rail right there. And that gives you some information right there if you're having a fuel problem about your fuel rail, the different pressure, voltage, all that kind of good stuff. And when you're done with that, all you do is back out and you can go right back out to the main menu and start with something else. All right, guys, so here we are in my Hyundai Tucson. So basically, we're going to see how this unit performs when it's hooked up to a Korean car, a basically an Asian car, okay? So let's see how this guy does. So let's start off with the diagnostic right here, and I'm going to let it basically connect to it automatically instead of doing it myself. So I'm going to go with the VIN right up here, auto read, and it'll do its thing. All right, so there you are. So it scanned it, and basically we're hooked up to the vehicle right now, and it's all loaded up and ready to go. So let's do a quick, well, let's see, control modules. Let's see what it has. All right, so these are all the different control modules that this vehicle has. And as you know, all vehicles are going to be different. They're all going to have different modules built into them. This is what the Tucson has. So that's what we have there. Let's go back. And let's do a quick scan. All right, there you go. So it did a scan, and that shows you basically all the different uh, functions that this vehicle has, all the different modules and so forth. Everything is passed, no fault, so everything is just fine inside this vehicle. There's nothing wrong with it. So let me turn on the vehicle, and we'll do a bit of testing. All right, so let's see. Let's uh, check out the engine and see what it can tell us. Let's do some uh, live data. All right, so we can pick out different uh, things to look at here. Let's pick something interesting to look at here. So let's look at intake air temperature and engine oil temperature and see what that shows us. And there you go. If you need to do like an oil change at a certain temperature or something like that, or you need to get it to a certain temperature before you can check the oil and so forth, this is where this comes in really handy. And let's graph it and see what we have. And let's do multi-graph. So we have a couple different things here. And this is probably not going to change very much over time on a graph. It'll just heat up a little bit on one of them, not much on the other one. So that comes in handy for some basic uh, maintenance that you need to do. But the graph should be sufficient right there. Let's back out of there. All right, so let's look right here at uh, ignition output value, cylinder 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let's see what that will tell us. And there you have ignition output value, cylinder 1, 2, 3, and 4. And as I give it a different acceleration, it'll change. And it seems to stay relatively uh, about the same for all of them. They work in continuous. 
You can graph that if you want to. Let's do multigraph. And that shows you what's going on there. And you can merge the graphs. See how everything works together. And the good thing is that you see the graph down here, and you also see it numerically up top here, where you can see actually what each one is doing. So you can interpret the graph and the numbers both at the same time. And going back to uh, text mode, you can see it all right there. Back out of this. And there you see you have the immobilizer key, smart key, fuel level sensor, all these different things that you can pick from and get yourself whatever information you need for your diagnosing. All right, so that shows you that it works just fine with an Asian vehicle. All right, guys, before I wrap up this video, let me point out a couple things that I didn't mention earlier. First of all, this scanner comes programmed to scan vehicles up to the 2021 model year. So even if you have a brand new vehicle, it will scan and diagnose it for you with no trouble at all. I also mentioned earlier that this scanner can scan over 10,000 models from all over the world. I demonstrated it for you using an American and a Korean vehicle with no problems. So after using it for a few hours, what do I think about the Foxwell NT809 All System Automotive Scanner? I think this is a fantastic scanner. It has all the capabilities that a DIYer or professional could ask for. You get 28 built-in reset functions. No need to purchase any additional functions. It's already built in. They come with the unit pre-installed. You get wireless communications if you want to buy an additional dongle. You get tons of real-time data and bi-directional control through the device. I could literally spend hours showing you all the things that this scanner can do but I cut the video down so you don't get bored watching it. If you do have any questions about the functionality of the scanner, feel free to comment down below. I'll be sure to answer your question. This is a scanner for the folks that really want to be able to do just about everything for their vehicle themselves. It gives you detailed, real-time graph or text display of what is happening with everything in your vehicle. Just select the module and the function you want, and you can see exactly what is going on. It has a very easy to use interface and the screen is very clear and easy to read. So if you're looking for a full featured scanner at a price that won't break the bank, I think you should really look into this scanner right here. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye for now.